Hello friends, this is David Vallade over with Alta Vista Technology. It's been a while since I've done a video and I wanted to do a little sample here that is in response to some new functionality, newer functionality. It's functionality that I think everyone can use and get a lot out of. So for those who don't know, Sage Intact has the ability to do your bank recs. This is not surprising, this is not revolutionary, but you can do your rec reconciliation directly within Sage Intact and you can do this a number of ways. The traditional old school way is that you can pick the bank that you want to reconcile, like so. And when you do that, you can put in your information and you can tick, 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 tick your way through your bank rack. It's been done before. It's not terribly exciting. And if we're being honest, it's probably not the best use of our time. In addition to that though, you can see in this window, I also have the ability to do an import. Well, that's better. So if you had a bank, a bank that had a lot of activity, you could go to your website, download the file and upload it to your bank rack here within Sage Intact and off you go. That's better, but there's a better option than that even that we have available. And that is using something called bank feeds. As of this recording, last I heard anyway, Sage Intact has over 14,000 participating banks and there's more banks being added all the time. So there's a really high probability, even if you have a more smaller regional bank, it's very likely they still participate. But I've had clients of mine who say, yeah, well, that might be true, but our bank rec is more complicated than that. There's more going on. And I'm not confident that any system can be smart enough to capture the information that we need. I don't think that any system is smart enough to handle all the complexity that is centered on our bank transactions. And I'm here to assure a lot of people that actually we have quite a bit we can do here. So let me show. I'm gonna go into this setup here in this environment and I'm gonna make a rule set. And I'm gonna abandon the changes on that window I was on. And this is asking me, you know, what, what the reason why you get to make a rule set is you can make several different rules really that come together to decide how the system can match transactions between what we see in Intact and what we see in the bank. I'll give an example. So I have a demo company here and I have a, a particular checkbook and it's called my 100 check rules here. <laughs> 100 check is the name of the checkbook and I'm gonna give it this ID. And I'll give it the same name too. As the name implies, this is a rule set. So you'll see a few rules here that come together. This is the, the container that holds them all. And I could apply this to multiple uh, checkbook accounts, but I'm going to just pick this one right here. And there we go. Okay, so now I have a rule set. I'll just save that. Pretty good. Now let's say I wanna do a few things. This this by itself doesn't really do anything other than like set the rules of the game or set a container that we're gonna be apl applied to that bank. But let's make some individual rules now. So to do that, I'm just gonna go right here and add a rule. And for this, let's start easy. Uh, maybe I'll call this um, exact checks or something like that. I can call this whatever I want. And you'll see why that, that name might make sense in a second. Okay, so I'm saying that this is a matching rule. I'm calling it exact checks. And then let's work our way down. Uh, there's a filter, now file this away. I wanna use this later, but for the moment, I'm gonna skip this. I'm just gonna collapse it for now. That'll come in handy in a bit. Now I get to say how I want the system to handle my groupings here. So I'm gonna say, okay, when we compare our intact transactions to our bank, let's take each, we'll group by each document number within intact and the posting date. And then likewise over on the bank side, and then compare those two. And then we get to say how we want things to be handled down here in this uh, bottom section. So the easy thing is, well, I need the amounts over on the bank side to equal the amount within intact. If it doesn't, I don't want you to match it. Likewise, I might say I want the document number to match and I'm calling this exact check. So let's say document number, you do have this, there's, there's actually two options here. There's document number precise. And if you've ever, depending on your bank, they may pad some leading zeros to the check number. And if that is you, that might be a problem when you're trying to reconcile. Well, Intact thought of that. So you could pick either case, whatever's appropriate. I'm gonna say that the bank number, the check number over on the bank should equal the document number or check number over here in Intact. Okay, so now I'm matching all the amounts and checks over on the bank with the amounts and checks over in intact. 
That sounds good. I think I could do more with dates, I suppose. I could do different things like that, but I really don't need to worry in my example. I think that's that's plenty good. Like if I have a check number and an amount over in the bank and I have the roughly that, well, if I have the exact amount over in um, intact along with the document number, then yeah, go ahead and clear it out. So I will save that. Now I could be done. That could be it. That could be the end of the story. But I wanted to give another uh, little complication. I have this Excel file here. Let's suppose that you use ADP for payroll. And let's say when you do that, when you do a, a payroll transaction, ADP has over on the bank side, they just withdraw, let's say in this example, $2,000 for the, the pay run for a certain date. And it's just a lump sum amount. But let's suppose over an intact, when I import my entry from ADP or when ADP, depending on how you have it set up, they can actually call the API and make an entry directly in Sage Intact. And let's say in this example, that it's actually detailed. I have 15 different employee payroll checks and sure enough, they all add up to $2,000. Well, that last rule that I made a second ago, I said that you needed the dollar amount to match and you needed to have the document number match. Well, shoot, I, you know, this won't work. Like I'm using ADP 1000 as the document number over on the bank side, and I'm calling it payroll over on the intact side. The dates match, though well, that's great, but that's probably the only thing that does match, right? I mean, they match in total. If I add up all the checks together, sure enough, these do match. So if I didn't do anything else beyond what I've done so far within Sage Intact, it would match everything else, which is still good. That's still really good. But this is one example where, as I have it set, Intact's not going to match because this particular example doesn't follow the rules that I created. Well, why don't we make a rule? I mean, that's the whole idea of a rule set is that I can have separate rules. So I would like to say, hey, anytime that the bank starts with ADP or has ADP in the name, or if I have payroll and Intact, well, that's a different rule. We should look at that separately and try to match those criteria. So let me drag this out of the way and let's do that. So I'm gonna add another rule. And this one we'll call payroll. Like so. Now I'm gonna use that filter that I didn't use previously. So I'm gonna say the data source over on the bank, I want the document number to anything that contains ADP. And you actually, I did that kind of quick. If I look at the uh, criteria here, there's equals, actually begins with might be better. I'll do that. So I'll say anytime the bank transaction document number begins with ADP. And just pulling back my example over on the screen to take a look at it, that means that this one would be in the game. But all my regular checks, those don't start with that prefix. So those would be ignored by this particular rule. Okay, and while I'm here, I'll note that my intact, I'm gonna assume that I'm always gonna start with payroll. So let's do that. I'm gonna say, I only want this rule to look at the intact transactions where the document number, maybe I'll say contains, but again, I'll just say begins with, and oops, there we go, and I'll put payroll. So I think you can see where I'm going here. I'm making a very precise rule. This one rule by itself won't match everything but it will just match this. Okay, so this is going to only look at those transactions. So I'll, I'll shrink this uh, filter down. And now when it comes to how I group things, uh, now it's a little different. Now I want to over um, on the intact side, do I want to group it by document number? I don't actually, because over on the intact side, you know, those are those are different document numbers. If I pull my example back, if I were to group it by the document number, then I would have all these different transactions. So don't group it by that. But you can group it by date, that's fine, let's do that. So I'm gonna group it by date on the intact side. Over on the bank side, I can group it by date. And actually I could group by document number or not. Um, but by doing this, now you could see that uh, I'm just, if I leave it as you see right here, I'm just gonna group it by date. So now if I say the date of the ADP transactions and the date of my payroll transactions, those are how we're gonna group things and then we're going to match them. So now I would say I wanna group the amount 
over on the bank, that needs to equal the amount over an intact. And likewise, I also want to do the date. So we'll say the posting date over in um, on the bank side. I want that to be considered here. And I could say equals, that's what I was going to do. You could also, just to be clever here, I'll say it has to be within one day. All right. So by doing this, let's back up. This one rule is only going to, I called it payroll checks. It's only going to look at uh, situations where these things are true, where the bank has the ADP as the prefix there, where my intact has the payroll in the name. And then just looking at the document date, you know, the posting date, and comparing the amounts of the dates. So now, if I look back at my example here, it would group all these transactions together by date. So I would have the $2,000 and it would group the ADP by date, same date there, or actually it can be within one day, <laughs> the way I have it set. And that's $2,000. So we have a match. So then with this rule would fire, it would go ahead and check off all the boxes for all these transactions. Now, in that example, I have like 15 transactions and that's great but I could have hundreds. So this is these are two rules that are awfully clever that are going to work together to help my bank rec just fly by and be all automatic, no touch. I mean, I could pull it up and I could see it and I actually still have the control. So everything that gets checked as matched is still held there so I can review it. So it doesn't, it's not like I would lose control of the thing, but it would match anything that I have there. And if it didn't match the criteria, like let's pretend that those payroll checks were posted two days out of, out of um, out of alignment, then you could still come in by hand and check those and resolve it there. But now like we're, we're putting our time into those exceptions. We're putting our time into finding those little things that that can come up in real life and not putting our time and energy into just mindlessly clicking boxes. So I hope that helps. It's a little quick example of one way that Sage Intact can make bank recs easier and faster and more efficient. And it's there for anyone to take advantage of. It's there right within Sage Intact. And it's a great feature that more people could benefit from. Thanks. And I'll talk to you all soon.